Hello, and welcome to another little session of Civil Engineering with Tani J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tani J. Laird. In this video, we're going to be finishing up our look at beam deflection by integration. And in this video, we're just going to be working through one quick example, well, actually one fairly long example, um, of uh, finding the uh, deflection and slope equations of a beam that has a discontinuity somewhere along its length. So in our previous example, we looked at a uh, uniformly loaded, simply supported beam. So the uh, load function was continuous throughout the beam. In this problem we'll be working th that we'll be working through, uh, there, the load function is, discontinu is discontinuous, and there's also a point load. So that introduces certain complexities, and uh, that we will explore the tools and methods used to uh, use uh, the end value of one region of integration as the boundary condition of the next region of integration. If not, we'll go ahead and get started. So. Uh, today we're going to finish up our look at the calculating the deflection of um, beams by integration. So uh, what I wanted to do today was work through a uh, another example of looking at the deflection of beams by integration, but in this case looking at something that has a discontinuity in the center or at some location, and then hopefully seeing how we can uh, how we can use the tools of uh, boundary conditions that we discussed previously and just see how all that works together in an example. Okay, so let's do something like this. So again, we are just working with more de beam deflection by integration. And that marker is bad, so let's get rid of that. All right, so example one, uh, let's say we have a beam a perfectly drawn, perfectly uh, straight, uh, horizontal, perfectly horizontal, simply supported beam. And let's say there is a load of 10 kips here. Let's say there is a load of 10 kips at the center. And uh, let's go ahead and then give it a distributed load on one side of, oh, I don't know, um, let's say, Mm, one kip per foot. And then it'll have reactions uh, AY and BY. And then let's go ahead and give it some dimensions. And let's do 12 feet and 12 feet. So before we start, uh, before we start calculating with this problem, let's think about what what is going to happen here. So um, we're not going to have any discontinuities in our moment function because we don't have any point couples or fixed supports or something like that interior to the beam. Uh, so, in, but what we will have, however, is a discontinuity in the shear function. We will have a discontinuity in the shear function at the location of this point load because that's going to cause a sudden drop in the uh, magnitude of our point load. So, uh, <clears throat> so that'll be fine for our shear, but our moment should be a nice continuous function. And because we have a simply supported beam, uh, there should also, and that, uh, that will transfer as, uh, for one continuous uh, moment function um, through. Well, I shouldn't say the moment function, will, I guess the moment function will be continuous, but it won't be differentiable if I want it to be uh, proper. Uh, there will be no sudden jumps in the moment function, but we will, because we have uh, a discontinuity in our shear function, we will have piecewise functions for all of this um, for both the uh, shear, moment, slope, and deflection. Uh, we will have uh, uh, piecewise functions in each of these intervals for one interval from 0 foot to 12 foot and one foot or one interval from 12 feet to uh, 24 feet. So again, the key here is that we have a discontinuity at the center represented here. This is our discontinuity. And our discontinuity, again, is represented by a change in the uh, examples of discontinuities are point loads and changes in our distributed load. And at x equals 12 feet, we have both of them here. So we have a, uh, on the left-hand side of the beam, we have no distributed load. And uh, at 12 feet, the distributed load starts up. And then we at 10 feet, we have, or at 12 feet, we have this 10 kip uh, downward point load. So uh, in other words, we're going to have uh, functions 
that are piecewise. We're going to have a shear as a function of x that's a piecewise function, a moment that's a piecewise function, a slope that's a piecewise function, and a deflection that is a piecewise function. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, get started. And the best way to do that is to simply start by finding our reactions. So let's see, uh, summation of forces, uh, let's do a summation of moments about point A. Let's see, I will have a negative 10 kips counterclockwise positive times a moment arm length of 12 feet. And then uh, minus one kip per foot times 12 foot getting the equivalent point load of our uh, distributed load here. And a moment arm length from point A of 18 feet. And all that equals zero, of course. Oh, can't forget my reaction. Uh, plus BY times uh, 24 feet. And all of that equals zero. Okay. So then we have, let's see, so we will have uh, negative 120 uh, kip feet, and then 12 times 18, let's see, um, for 12 times 18, could probably do that in my head, but I'm feeling lazy, it's Friday. So that is uh, going to be 216. So minus 216. Uh, plus 24BY equals zero, and so therefore BY we can find fairly easily just adding up and solving for BY, and divided by 24, that is 14 kips. So just simple statics, not too bad. Okay, uh, then we can do the same thing um, the moments about B. Summation of moments about point B. Uh, let's see, we can have uh, negative AY times 24 feet. Uh, then plus 10 kips times its moment arm length of 12 feet. Uh, plus one kip per foot times a length of 12 feet times a moment arm length of six feet from point B. Oh, and can't forget, no, I guess we already have our AY on there, so we're fine there. Okay, so then putting out everything to the other side and solving for AY by dividing by 24. Let's see, 10 times 12 plus 12 times six. Uh, and then let's see here, dividing by uh, 24 then, I get that AY is equal to eight kips. And so I can check that by doing a summation of forces in the vertical direction. I want to make sure I have my, uh, I do want to make sure I have my uh, reactions uh, right off, correct right off the bat, because that would be uh, good to have. Would hate to, have to, hate to make an error at such an early step, which of course is certainly possible. Eight kips plus 14 kips are two reactions. Uh, minus 10 kips are downward point load minus the 12 kips, which is one kip per foot over 12 feet. And that all equals zero. So we have a negative 22 and 22. And so we are good that in fact balances out uh, for a summation of forces in the vertical direction. So we now have our, uh, we now have our uh, reactions. Okay. So um, we're going to try to solve this by integration. And again, I guess I should probably say uh, what is uh, requested here. Um, find y as a function of x. This is what we're looking for. We are looking for the deflection of the beam as a function of x uh, at every point in the beam. So um, to do that, we need to start, we, we're, we're, uh, to do this, we're going to be using integration. And if we're going to integrate, we have to have something, if we're going to solve by integration, we have to have some integration, uh, something to actually integrate. So uh, to do that, we're going to start with our, uh, we know that uh, shear is equal to the negative integral of w as a function of x. So the first thing we need to do is get our w, our distributed load as a function of x. So w as a function of x, let's see, that is going to be equal to, well, this is going to be a piecewise function 
And from uh, 0 to 12, it's just going to be 0. Then from 12 to 24, it's going to be 1. So 0 kips per foot and 1 kip per foot. And this, again, is from uh, x is 0 to 12. And x is uh, 12 feet to 24 feet. So we now have, and, and, and I got this again just from simple inspection, there is no distributed load on the left-hand portion of the beam, and there is a one kip per foot downward point load on the right-hand side of the beam. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I think I will leave, I'm going to erase this, but I'm going to draw redraw a simplified version of it. A smaller version to give us more room to work because this is gonna this is gonna take a bit because we are go what I do want to do is I do want to work through all layers of all four layers of integration uh, hopefully and hopefully we won't make any math errors which is always possible when you're uh, working a problem on the fly but we'll give it a whirl. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, again, I'm just going to draw our beam kind of small here as a reference. We have a, uh, a 10 kip downward load and a 1 kip distributed load or 1 kip per foot distributed load. And then we have reactions of, let's see, 8 and 16. Uh, sorry, 8 and 14. 8 kips and 14 kips. Like so. Okay, so uh, I have W as a function of X. Now uh, I want to get shear as a function of X. And again, I know that shear as a function of X is the negative integral of W as a function of X. So uh, for the first interval, uh, that will be from zero. I'm going to designate these with a, uh, let's designate this first uh, region. I'll call these A and, well, I already have points A and B. So instead I will use, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe like just a capital one, and not a capital one, just a, a numeric one and a numeric two, something like that. So I'll have a V sub one, a V sub two, uh, et cetera. So V1, which will be the, uh, the shear in the first interval here, is equal to the negative integral of W1 as a function of x dx. And the integral of uh, 0 is just going to be a constant of integration. So just a C1. Uh, again, the integral of, uh, of this will simply be a constant. So uh, the integral of 0 will simply be a constant. So now um, I need to find that constant, and I know that at um, I know that about I do have one boundary condition for my shear on this side. I know that uh, on the left hand side at my reaction, that my um, that my uh, shear should jump up to positive eight. So my boundary condition that I can use for this first first portion is that the shear at x equals zero must be equal to positive eight kips. So boundary condition, uh, V at or V1 at X equals zero must be equal to eight kips. And if we substitute that in, well, there's no X to substitute in. So C1 just equals eight. So that means that V1 is just a positive eight kips. In other words, our shear is just going to uh, be a constant value uh, as we move across the uh, function there. Okay, so uh, then, uh, or as we move across the zone there. So we have this, now we need to find uh, the shear in uh, region two. So V2, uh, well, we know that V2 uh, is going to be equal to the negative integral of W2 uh, with respect to x dx. And W2 is the shear in our, or sorry, is the uh, 
distributed load in our second region. So that's just going to be equal to negative one, the integral of negative one kit per foot, or just one kit per foot, I should say, the uh, negative integral of one kit per foot, uh, dx. And that will then come to uh, negative x, uh, simply negative x plus another constant, plus a constant c. Now, um, let's see, how can we do this? So we need a, uh, we need to know the, uh, we need a constant, we need a uh, boundary condition in order to solve for this constant. Um, so let's see. So I guess I'll call this one C2 if I called that one C1. So I guess in total we'll have like eight constants of integration or something, but that's fine. Or actually, to not be too confusing, I'll call this um, C11. One for the uh, one for the the first one for uh, the first interval, the second one for the uh, number of integrations. So this would be C21. Okay, that way I won't have any duplications of constants. Okay, so for C21, uh, let's see. I know that at uh, that the shear is going to be constant all the way across, and then it's going to undergo a drop right at uh, the middle. So if we were at positive eight kips throughout this region, that means we're going to drop down to uh, negative two kips. Um, we're gonna drop from eight to negative two from the point load. So I know boundary condition that uh, V2 at X equals 12 uh, will be equal to, again, eight kips, which is the uh, value in the previous region, minus 10 kips, or simply equal to negative two kips. Uh, so that's, uh, so we know that uh, at x equals 12, the shear in the second region is, uh, must be equal to negative two kips. So I can then say uh, negative two equals negative uh, 12, uh, negative one kip per foot times 12 feet, or just 12 um, plus C2 comma one. And so C2 comma one will then be equal to 10 uh, kips. So V2, the shear in region two then, will simply be equal to negative X uh, plus 10. Negative X plus 10 kips. And I can check this by putting in a uh, for, if I put in 24 feet for X, so if I put in negative 24 feet for x, I will get, well, just negative 24. A negative 24 plus 10 is negative 14. And that's exactly what I would expect uh, to allow my point load or my reaction at the end to cause the shear to jump back up to zero. So we have our shear function now, and we have both regions of it. And we know that the overall shear function then is as follows. The shear function is, let's see, that is going to be... Uh, we have eight kips um, when we're between zero feet and 12 feet. And we have negative X plus 10 kips when we're between 12 feet and 24 feet. Okay, so we now have our shear function and next we need to find our moment function. So we have our full shear function. Next, we just need to find our moment function. So we've got, uh, we have uh, four layers of integration to get through all together, and we've just finished the first one. Isn't that lovely? All right, so we have our shear. Uh, next, we need to get our moment function. And I will get uh, first the, uh, let's get the moment one first. So this would be, uh, use. so this will be M1, using the subscripts I've started using. 
M1, again, is going to be the moment in the first region of integration. So M1, moment is equal to the integral of shear uh, with respect to x. So that's going to be equal to the integral of V1 uh, dx, which is equal to uh, the integral of 8 kips dx, which will simply be 8x plus a constant of integration, which will be, uh, and that will be, uh, let's see, c1 comma 2. I don't like this marker. Plus uh, c1 comma 2. Okay. Uh, then, uh, let's see. So we have our moment function here. Next, I, we need to find a boundary condition. And because this is a simply supported beam, I know that the moment, uh, that the moment uh, function at 0 should be equal to 0. So boundary condition, m, and, and especially m1, at x equals 0, will be equal to 0, because it is a pin support. So uh, that will lead us to that the, the knowledge that c1, comma 2 should be equal to 0. should be equal to zero. Uh, then, let's see, so we have that. So now we have our uh, moment one function is simply going to be equal to 8x. Now, um, I need a boundary, so, so let's go ahead and move on to the second one. And the boundary condition for this one will be a bit interesting, a bit more interesting. I could say that the uh, moment is simply zero at x equals 24 feet, but I want to try something a little different. So I know the moment in uh, what, I'm, what I'm calling M2, which is the moment expression in the second region, is going to be equal to the integral of shear 2 uh, with respect to x dx. So that is equal to the integral with respect to x of negative x uh, plus 10 dx. And uh, let's see, so, so running through that integral, that would be negative x squared over 2 uh, plus 10x. So negative x squared over 2 plus 10x, and then plus a constant. And that constant, let's see, what constant name should we give that? This is uh, the second region and the second uh, moment. So I'm going to call that C2, comma T. Okay. Now, uh, I could, use, again, I could use the knowledge that the moment at x equals 24 is zero, but I'd rather say, so I'd rather uh, demonstrate something that is a little bit useful for beams that have many pieces, and that is to, to get my boundary condition, as we discussed previously in, in the last lecture, uh, we can get the boundary condition from what from a following region using the boundary condition using the end value of the previous region, or in other words, boundary condition uh, m two at x equals twelve feet should equal m one at x equals twelve feet. There is no there is not going to be any kind of jump in our moment diagram here. Uh, but the only way you can have a jump in the moment diagram is if you have a fixed support or a a couple applied to a uh, applied to a beam at a location. So since we have no um, since we have no um, uh, such discontinuities, I know that the moment function is going to be continuous across the beam, and so there will be a change in the moment function, but the actual value of the moment function will be constant as we move across the beam, or will be. Uh, um, continuous as we move across the beam. So uh, m, so I need to find m2 at x equals 12 feet, and, or m1 actually, m1 at x equals 12 feet is going to be simply 8 times 12, and that will come to uh, 96 kips, or kip feet. So therefore, m2 at x equals 12 feet should be equal to 96. And so then that is, let's see, so we'll have uh, 96 equals negative x, which is 12 uh, squared over 2 plus 10 times 12 plus c22. 
and C22, the second constant of integration for in our second region. Now let's see, let's run that through the old calculatron. Now let's see, negative 12 squared over 2 plus 120. And then, okay, so that's a positive number. And then uh, 96 minus that. I get that this constant of integration, uh, constant of integration is uh, 48 uh, kit feet. And uh, just for uh, clarity, I'll go ahead and write this out, the full moment function out over here. But to do that, I need to erase the, the left board. Let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, oh, and this was uh, eight kips, I believe, yes. Eight kips right there. Okay, so we now have our complete moment function, which again is a piecewise function. And uh, let's see, we know that it is eight kips or eight X, uh, well, simply eight X in the first region. Eight X when X is between zero and 12. And uh, we, it will then be negative x squared over 2 plus 10x plus our constant. So negative x squared over 2 uh, plus 10x plus 48. And this is when x is between 0 feet and 12 feet, or sorry, 20, uh, 12 feet and 24 feet. 12 feet to 24 feet. Okay, now I would like to just do a check of this moment function, and if I did this correctly, at uh, x equals uh, 24 feet, our moment function should come back to zero because we do have a roller support there. But I, that's, that's another one of the benefits of using the internal boundary conditions at, at when you can, and that, and that is that it allows you to check some of your values. So uh, let's see, negative 24 squared over 2 plus 10 times 24 plus 48. And in fact, I do uh, get that m equals zero at x equals 24. So that gives me a little bit of confidence in these values. So just a simple check. I can do m at x equals 24 feet, the right-hand side of the beam. Uh, that, does that equal zero? And yes, it does. So we're good. Okay, so we now have our complete moment function. And our next step is going to be to determine our slope function. And uh, let's see, so this is gonna be a little bit complicated, but I think we can handle it. So I know that at, uh, let's see, I know that at, um, uh, well, I guess we don't need to worry about boundary conditions yet. I can just say that my slope, and I'm just gonna do this in terms of EI. So I know that theta as a function of X is equal to, as we've determined previously, is equal to one over EI times the integral of moment as a function of x dx. So I can integrate each of these and I will get uh, some moment function, or sorry, some sort of slope function. And let's see, so um, let's get the, uh, let's first do the interval from zero to 12. So uh, let's call that theta one. Uh, that would just be equal to the integral of 8x dx. Well, 1 over, in, one over ei times that. 8x dx, so that's going to be 1 over ei. Uh, times, that will be, uh, let's see, uh, x squared, or that looks like 4x squared to me. Uh, and then plus some constant of integration, some, some sort of constant of integration uh, let's call that, let's see, so we're in the, this, the, we're still in the, um, 
we are in the uh, first region, but the uh, third integration. So I'm going to call that C13. Okay. Uh, so we have this, and unfortunately, we don't actually have any boundary conditions we can use yet. So um, because we don't really know anything about the slope of the beam at any given location. In fact, we can't even say the slope of the beam is zero at the center because this is not a symmetric system. So we'll just have to keep chugging along and uh, hopefully uh, get some uh, better information as we work through this. Okay, so theta 2. This is, again, this is going to be the, um, the slope of the beam in the second interval from x equals, zero, uh, x equals 12 feet to x equals 24 feet. So that is, the, that is going to be equal to 1 over ei times the integral of our second region, our second moment region, which is negative x squared over 2 uh, plus 10x plus 48, and integrated with respect to x dx. So uh, that is then uh, 1 over ei uh, times, that's going to, let's see, that's going to be uh, x cubed over 6 plus 5x squared plus 48x and plus another constant of integration, uh, and this is going to be c uh, 2 comma 3. Now, at this point, I want to, I'd, I'd like to avoid uh, working with a ridiculous number of constants at once. And thankfully, I because I, I don't want to have to solve four simultaneous equations. So uh, at this point, I'm going to solve, uh, because I, I do actually know something about the slope. I know the slope at the uh, at the end that the slope should be a continuous function. In other words, as I approach the the discontinuity from the left, uh, that slope should be equal to the slope approaching from the right. The beam itself is not going to undergo any rapid changes in slope because that would pretty much require the beam to to be breaking in half, which would uh, not be a good thing from a uh, structural design point of view. All right then, so let's see. So I want to, what I really want to do is I'm not going to be able to avoid all discon, or not all discontinuities, all, uh, all constants of integration until I get to the final step. But what I can do is I can replace C23 with some other, with some sort of expression of C13. And we'll see what we mean by this, but I can, I can say boundary condition. Whatever theta it is, I don't actually know the value of it, but I know that my slope, my theta, uh, theta 1 at x equals 12 should be equal to theta 2 at x equals 12. The beam needs to be continuous. So the slope of the beam is going to be continuous all the way along its length, and the deflection of the beam is going to be continuous all the way, its long, all the way along its length. So I can use the, uh, the extreme value, the right val right-hand most value in the first region as the starting value in the second region. So I'm just going to set these two uh, expressions equal to each other. 1 over ei uh, times 4x squared. Well, that will be 4 uh, times... Uh, 12 squared, uh, 4 times 12 squared, plus our C13 uh, is equal to 1 over EI. And let's see, actually, we'll put this on another line, I think. 1 over EI times, let's see, 12 to the third over 6, just simply substituting in tw substituting 12 into this equation, uh, plus uh, 5 times 12 squared, plus 48 times 12, uh, plus this C23. 
that C23, again, that is the uh, constants of integration for the second region in the third layer of integration, which is our uh, slope here, our slope layer. Okay, the first thing I can do is just get rid of the EI that will just cancel out. And then I can do a little calcul bit of calculation. So four times 12 squared. Let's see, that will be 576. So 576 plus C13 uh, equals, well, let's see, we'll have 12 to the third over six plus five times 12 squared plus 48 times 12. Let's see, 12 to the third over six plus five times 12 squared plus 48 over 12. And so this should equal uh, 1584 plus C23. And what I really want to get is that C23 is then equal to, uh, C23 is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, that is going to be C13 minus, it's just going to be the combination of these two, 576 minus that 1584, and I get minus 1008. Uh, so now I have, uh, so now what I can do is I can substitute this back into my uh, C2 function and say that, okay, that uh, I now have my complete uh, theta function, my complete slope, and I'll only have one constant of integration in it that I need to carry forward. So I can say theta as a function of x is equal to here, we will have our, um, let's see, our 4x squared uh, plus c13. And this is when x is between uh, 12 feet and 0 feet. Then I'm just going to replace my uh, c23 with my c23 expression. And I will have, uh, let's see. Oh, and I can't forget my 1 over EI times all of this. That's still going to be out front. That doesn't disappear. But I'll have x to the third uh, over 6 plus 5x squared plus 5x squared plus 48x. And then uh, my C23, which is, again, an expression of C13. So that's plus... Uh, C1 comma 3 minus 1008, and that's when x is between uh, 24 feet and 12 feet. So we now have a full uh, we now have a full theta function, and that is and we have everything in terms of one constant of, integra of integration, which will help us as we work through the last stage of the problem. Assuming we make no math errors, which of course is certainly possible. clean board here to work on and we'll finish this up. Okay, so we now have our complete uh, slope function as a function of x. We just have one layer of integration to go and we can get our uh, we can get our deflection function. So um, I know that uh, y1, which is again the inter which is going to be the uh, deflection function as a uh, function of x in the first region from 0 feet to 12 feet, is going to be equal to the integral of theta of x1, theta 1 of x, dx. So that is equal to 1 over ei, uh, 1 over ei times uh, the integral of uh, everything here, 4x squared plus c1 comma 3, and that's that's our complete theta function, and integrate and then close bracket and integrate with respect to x. So we'll have one over e i. Oh, help if I draw my integral sign. Um, one over e i 
Uh, times, let's see, that will be 4 thirds x to the third plus c1 comma 3 uh, plus a uh, c1 comma 4, or c1 3 x. You have to integrate both polynomials, and so um, plus c1 4, our, our uh, constant integration for our uh, first region, but in the fourth integration. And I think that's good for now. Then um, I can, well, actually, I can't, I can probably get this one right away by saying boundary condition. I can say that uh, that y1 or the slope, the deflection at x equals zero should be zero. It's, it has a pin support there. So there should be no deflection at uh, our left support. So I can use this as a boundary condition. And I have this y1 here. And when I substitute zero in for x and zero in for y, I can conclude that c1, four must be equal to zero. c1, four is equal to zero because when I put in x or zero for x and zero for y, everything else falls away and this constant is left by itself. And so it must be equal to zero. So therefore, y1 will simply be four thirds or one over ei, uh, one over ei, times uh, 4 thirds x cubed uh, plus c1 3x, like so. Okay, so we have that. Then um, I'll want to, now, then I need to work through the uh, little, little trickier integration, which is in the uh, second region. Okay, so uh, y2. The second region's deflection equation is going to be equal to the first region's, the integral of the first region's deflect, uh, slope equation. So that is equal to the integral of theta of x dx, theta 2 of x dx. Um, let's see here. So that is equal to the integral of theta 2. So we have the integral of x cubed over 6 plus 5x squared plus 48x uh, plus c13, that's that same constant we haven't got yet, uh, plus c13 minus 1008. So just what we have from over there. And so that will then come to, let's see, we'll have x to the fourth over 24 plus 5 thirds x to the third plus 24x squared plus c13x uh, and then minus 1008, uh, let's see, uh, minus 1008 times x and then uh, plus a c2 comma 4. And that is the constant integration in the second region for the, but the fourth integration of it. So uh, let's just double check x cubed over six, five x squared, 48 x, c one three and minus 1008. So yes, we'll have, uh, let's see, x to the fourth over 24. Uh, let's see then five x to the, oh, five over five thirds x to the third, uh, 24 x squared. Uh, C13 X and then minus 1008 times X plus our final constant of integration. So now all we have to do is determine our, um, oh, and I cannot forget my one over EI from all of this lovely nonsense. Isn't engineering fun? Anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and apply, uh, we have two constants and we have two unknown constants and to find those we're going to have to apply two boundary conditions. One, a continuity boundary condition saying that we know that the deflection at the midpoint will be continuous and one um, saying the deflection at the end point must be equal to zero. So I think we'll work through that other one first. Well, it's about the same actually. Uh, 
Okay. So first boundary condition. I, I have two constants of integration. I would like to find both of them. And so a uh, boundary condition. I know that uh, y1, because the beam is not breaking in half, there's not going to be a sudden jump in the uh, deflection at some location. So I know that y1 at x equals 12 feet must be equal to y2 at x equals 12 feet. So I can simply, uh, I can simply uh, substitute 12 in for this. Now I am going to eliminate the one over EI. I'm not gonna write that because that clearly cancels out. So we will have uh, four thirds, and I'm gonna substitute my 12 in as I go. Uh, four thirds times 12 to the third, plus C13 times 12 for our X there. Uh, then this is going to be equal to, all this is going to be equal to uh, this fun uh, nonsense. Um, so we will have uh, 12 to the fourth over 24 uh, plus five thirds, uh, 12 to the third, uh, plus 24 times 12 squared. Uh, let's see, so then plus C13 plus 12 times C1, 3 minus 1008 times 12. 1008 times 12 uh, plus C24. Lovely. Um, okay, so, and we have this as an equality. Okay, so uh, let's do a little math here. Just assuming we set everything up correctly, C24, 1008 times 12, C1, uh, 12 times C13 here, 24 times 12 squared, 5 thirds, 12 to the third, uh, 12 to the fourth over 24. Isn't math fun? <laughs> okay, so uh, on our left side of the equation, that's the easy one, 4 thirds times 12 to the third um, is going to be, let's see, 2304. Two three zero four plus twelve times c one comma three will equal. Let's see. So we have twelve to the fourth over twenty four plus five thirds uh, times twelve to the third. Five thirds twelve to the third. Twelve to the fourth over twenty four uh, plus uh, twenty four times twelve squared. Um, and then let's see. Minus a thousand and eight times twelve. And I get, uh, let's see, that we hit, so that we'll, so we will then have, if I added all this up correctly, um, I get, let's see, I'm getting uh, 12 C13, 12 C13, uh, plus C2, uh, well, actually, uh, plus C24, uh, minus 4896. And interestingly, our 12s, all 12 C13 here will actually cancel out. So that's uh, a bit fortuitous. Um, it's almost like that's how calculus works. Um, so um, we can then directly solve for our C24. Our C24 is just going to be the sum of this and this, well, times negative one, plus that 2304, and that is 7200. So that's our C24. Um, so we have that constant of integration. And now I need to apply, I need to then apply one final boundary condition. And that's to say that the deflection at x equals 24 feet must be equal to zero. So I can say boundary condition. Uh, y2 at x equals uh, 12, uh, 24 feet, sorry, should be equal to zero. In other words, the deflection at the right-hand side must be equal to zero. So I'm going to put in, um, let's see, I'm going to put in zero for, for y2 and my value for c24 and solve for c13. So, and the one over ei will cancel out. So just zero equals, uh, let's see, 24 to the fourth over 24. 
uh, plus 5 thirds times 24 to the third plus 24 times 24 squared uh, then plus C13x, C13 again is what we're actually looking for, plus C13 uh, times 24 minus 1008 times 24 and then plus C24 which is that 7200 and that all equals zero. Okay, so 24 to the third plus 5 thirds times 24 to the third plus another 24 to the third. Let's 24 to the third here. Okay, so 24 to the third plus 5 thirds times 24 to the third uh, plus 24 to the third. Isn't that lovely? Uh, minus 1008 times 24 plus 7200. I get 24 times C13. Uh, let's see, uh, plus, just double checking this, 1008 times 24 plus 7200, yes, plus 33,696. All of this equals to zero. And so C13 is just equal to negative, um, that divided by 24 or negative 1,404. And we now have everything we need to set up our final, um, our final equations. And so we have this, uh, let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and write it out for uh, completion's sake. We now have everything we need to set up our full deflection equations. And we can just scribble these down really quick. All right, so I can say that our deflection our y is a function of x is equal to a piecewise function as follows. Uh, let's see, for the first region, uh, what will we have? We'll have uh, 12 x to the fourth, or just x to the fourth over 24. Uh, let's see, plus 5 thirds x to the third. 5 thirds x to the third. Uh, let's do a 5 thirds x to the third plus 24x squared um, plus 12 times c13, which is this. Uh, so actually it will be, oh, not plus 12, uh, plus minus c13, which is just minus 1404 times x. And then, um, let's see, minus 1,008x, well, actually, I suppose these will combine together, won't they? 1,008 plus uh, that uh, C12, so 1404, um, let's see, so 1404 uh, minus, uh, so my, uh, negative 1404 minus 1,008, so minus 2412x, uh, minus 2412x, uh, and then plus C24, which is 7200. And this is when x is between 0 feet and 12 feet. Uh, let's see. So we have that. Oh, wait, I got this backwards, didn't I? Oops. Um, sorry about that. Uh, rather than rewriting it, I'll just put it backwards, so that's fine. So this is when x is, uh, I wrote the uh, y2 for the y1. Uh, so this is this would be when x is between uh, 12 feet and 24 feet. 
And then uh, we will have for uh, the first region, so these should be flipped back and forth, but uh, we would have 4 thirds times x to the third uh, plus c13, which is that negative 1404, negative 1404 uh, times x, and that is when, when x is between uh, 0 feet and 12 feet. And that is how you would solve uh, for the deflection of a beam with a discontinuity in the center, or at any location. Okay, so I know that was a lot. Uh, any questions over this? And hopefully there are no uh, math errors in there, which is certainly possible. The method is correct, but uh, we were doing this on the fly, so especially towards the end, there, there's always the possibility for mathematical uh, flubs and errors, etc. But uh, without, but the method is correct, but uh, as long as there's no calculation errors, the numbers will be correct as well. Okay, any questions before we wrap up? All right, that'll do it for today. So I know I went through that fairly quickly, but hopefully you could at least uh, follow along. And if not, you can always rewind and uh, go and uh, take a look at that. So uh, again, hopefully there were no errors in this. This problem was done on the fly in front of a class, a live class. So you never know, um, math errors are certainly always possible. So um, please let me know if you have any questions. If you have any uh, questions or just want to like, comment, and subscribe to make the robots happy, feel free to do so in the comments below. Uh, regardless, hope you found this a little bit informative, uh, just revealing the methods of uh, applying boundary conditions in multiple zones of integration uh, to solve a moderately complex uh, beam deflection uh, problem. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope there were no errors overall, but uh, hopefully you found this enjoyable or at least a bit informative. All right, so I, I look forward to seeing you all in the next lecture. Look forward to seeing you all soon. And as always, thank you.